Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at change in reporting entity. This topic is part of accounting changes, which we were discussing, such as change in accounting principle, which we handled retrospectively, change in accounting estimate, which we handled prospectively. So basically, I want to make sure at this point, you know what res retrospectively is, prospectively. If not, please view the prior recording. Now, what do we mean by change in reporting entity? Well, we have to go back and review few terms to be familiar with this concept. Remember, if one company owns stocks ownership in another company, if they own between 0 to 20% of the stock of the other company, we consider this ownership as passive. You have no saying in the company. Therefore, you would handle the investment using what's called the fair value. Sometimes they call it cost. Cost or fair value means the same thing. It means you would adjust your stocks, you would adjust your vested interests, your equity interests, up and down as the stock price of that subsidiary goes up and down. Now, if you own more than 20 but less than 50, here you have you have what's called significant influence. If you have significant influence because you own a substantial number of shares, you would have to use the equity method. Under the equity method, you will adjust your investment in proportion to the earnings from the subsidiaries. So if the subsidiaries reported net, in net income of a million, you own 30%, you would increase your investment by 30%. And if they pay dividend, the dividend reduce your investment using the equity method. Now, I'm assuming you know the fair value and the equity method. If not, go to the investment section uh, of my uh, lessons and view those. But I'm assuming you know those if you are looking at change in reporting entity. Once you own more than 50% of a particular company, now you control this company. Control means you have to consolidate with your parent company. It means this company, the subsidiary, is part of your parent company. So it has to be combined with your financial statement. So when that happened, so what, what does that mean? At some point, you might own between 20 to 50% of a particular company. Let's assume 40%. Then you purchase an additional 20. And that additional 20, now you own that company. If you own that company, it's going to change your consolidated financial statement. That new company, that new company at 60%, it's a new company. It has to be added to your company's financial statement rather, rather than reporting income and dividend as part of your investment. And that's a substantial change. When that happened, when you consolidate, once you have a new company that's being consolidated and you are presenting competitive financial statements, let's assume we're, we're in year X5. And X5, you have control of a company for the first time. If you are showing X5 and year X4, guess what? You have to show, you have to go back and show year X4 as if you own the company in year X4. Why? Because when you report the company in X5, you have control, you're going to show a lot of revenue and a lot of expenses that are not comparable to X4, but because in X4, you did not consolidate. So if you're showing X5 and X4, Obviously, you have to show as if it was consolidated, then the two companies, the two, the two years, not the two companies, the two years are comparable to each other. So simply put, if you have, if you consolidate, if this is a new consolidation and you're showing comparative financial statement, you have to treat this retrospectively. If you are showing prior financial statements, you have to change them. So this way they are comparative. And the same concept, if you go from consolidation to no consolidation, you removed some of those subsidiaries. And sometimes one subsidiary, if you remove it, it could be a substantial portion of your companies, of the parent company. Therefore, if you remove it and you're showing comparative financial statement, you remove it in X5 and you're showing X4. If you remove it from X5 and keeping it in X4, the numbers will, will, will be so weird because this might show a lot of revenues and suddenly your revenue went down. Why? Well, your revenue did not really go down. You're no longer consolidating that company. So that's why you have to show com comparatively, you have to restate. So once you show it comparatively, you have to show them both the same way as if the consolidation took place or if the consolidation was removed. So make sure you know this. Now, what happens now if we go from the, the 0 to 20 to 20 to 50. So basically going from the cost method, changing from cost to equity, or going from 
for example, you own between 20 and 50 and you sold the shares and you went from equity to cost. So remember, when you go into consolidation, you have to go back and retrospectively uh, change, especially if you are, not especially if you are showing comparative financial statement. Now we need to discuss what happened when you go from, from equity to cost or cost to equity. Now, before we discuss this, most likely you are either an accounting student or a CPA candidate. Welcome. The reason you are watching is because you need help and I'm glad you are here. Go a step further, go to farhatlectures.com where I have additional resources, lectures, multiple choice, true, false exercises. That's going to help you do better in your accounting courses as well as your CPA exam preparation. I'm a useful addition. I don't replace. I'm a useful addition to your CPA review course. Don't hesitate. Invest in yourself. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording. If you are watching, it's benefiting you. Like it. Share it with others. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So let's take a look first at change from the equity means going from equity to cost well the first thing easy no retrospective we don't have to go back simply put we go change from equity and we're going back to here so for example we used to own 40 percent and we sold you know 25 percent interest now we are into the zero to 20 percent interest going from equity to fair value well now we have to use the fair value method because we are no longer qualify under the equity. We no longer own between 20 to 50%. And all previously gains and losses recognized under the equity method are part of the carrying value. Now, real quick, I'm just going to do a quick review here. You have your investment account under the equity method. Under the equity method, every time the subsidiary earns profit, you increase your investment. Every time the subsidiaries incur a loss, you reduce your investment. All those changes, increases and decreases from gains and losses, they stay. They become part of the carrying value. So you don't change the number. Your cost basis is the carrying amount of the investment at the date of the change. So whatever that investment account is, it becomes your cost basis for the fair value. You're starting from there. You don't have to go back and retrospectively do anything. No retrospective ap application, which is easy. You don't have to go back and change any figures. No change of prior period or periods. It's done. It's easy. And you would, what you would do is you will apply the new method when the equity method no longer applicable. So let's assume uh, sometime March 3rd, you went from the equity because you sold your interest to the fair value. You will stop there and you will start using the, fa the fair value method. And at the end of the, the reporting period, you would record any unrealized gain or loss, gains or losses, basically as the difference between the carrying amount that you started with and the fair value of that investment. And life is good. Life is easy. We should all know how to deal with the unrealized holding gain or loss. If not, go to my investment chapter. The assumption here, this this is basically advanced topic. So you know how to deal with you know, recording unrealized holding gain or losses. Now we're going to go to equity. We're going to go to equity. Simply put, let's assume we have 15% and we really like the company. We're going to add another 15% and go to 30%. Now we, we went into the equity territory. What do we have to do? Again, no retrospective. Going from cost to equity, no prior adjustment is needed. Instead, what we're gonna do, account for the effect of the change in the period of the change and in future period. Obviously, it's gonna affect future period as long as we have this significant influence. So the investor company, at the cost of, the, of acquiring the additional stocks, and the investees company to the cost basis of the previously held interest. So simply put, whatever you paid here, you add to them whatever you paid to get to the 30%. It's, it's you add the cost. Now the best way to illustrate this is to actually look at an example. And let's assume on January 1st, Adam Company purchases 10% stock interest in Avi's company for 900,000. Well, 10% means you have no significant influence obviously you have no control we debit equity investment 900,000 credit cash 900,000 by the end of the year the fair value of avi's investment was 1,025,000 well fair value went up we're using the fair value method we have to write up our invest not write it up adjust our investment we're going to debit fair value for 125,000 and we're going to credit unrealized holding gain or loss which is a gain now and it's going to go to income for 125,000. And this is basically an example of the fair value method, adjusting your investment to fair value. Now, on December 31st, 20X1, 
let's assume January 1st x2 just kind of you know January 1st x2 so January 1st x2 Adam company purchases an additional 20% now we started with 10 plus 20 now we up to 30% what does that mean it means now we have to account for the investment going forward using the equity method and we paid half a million we debit the equity investment that we're going to call it avi it's 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 a separate equity investment okay because now this 900,000 was part of our investment okay so we have a new equity investment and we paid half a million we credit cash half a million now what do we have to do we have to reclassify the equity investment of this 900,000 so this 900,000 remember it has to be added to this half a million so what do we do we debit the equity investment of Avi 900,000 we credit the equity investment this one so we remove this one and we transfer it into this one okay the equity investment also we no longer need this fair value account this 125,000 is no longer needed because we no longer using the fair value so what do we have to do if we have a credit if we have a debit to fair value we have to credit fair value and what do we have to do well since we recorded the income we also have to take out the income but guess what this is a new year we can't go back and take out the income what do we do we reduce retained earnings what we're gonna do we're gonna reduce retained earning to eliminate this income of 125,000 and we're gonna credit the fair value adjustment to remove this 125,000 and simply put going forward we have an investment at equity started with half a million I'm sorry started with actually 900,000 technically then we added half a million to it we have an investment an equity investment of 5.9 million starting next year we're going to look at Avi's net income and if Avi earned net income we're going to increase our you know let's assume Avi's earned a million dollar of net income times 30 percent it means we'll, we'll increase our investment by 300,000 and when Avi pays dividend it's going to reduce our investment in the equity our investment in Avi's account and if we if Avi incur losses our equity investment will absorb the proportional share which is 30 percent of the losses in our investment so this is what you have to do what should you do now go to farhatlectures.com and work mcqs true false look at additional exercises that's going to help you solidify this topic don't take chances when you're studying for your cpa exam studying for your accounting courses invest in your career once you are done with this once you earn your degree once you get your certification you can focus on other things in life don't shortchange yourself good luck study hard and of course stay safe